Evening Freaks, I'm here to give you a read straight from the hip with lots of lip and we're moving forward in that great black conjunction reading series where I'm dropping in with each of the signs to see how things are going to play out during this period in the void while we're moving through this strange elliptical alignment of the void points of the sun and the moon. We had our first great black conjunction that occurred on the 16th. Uh, we had a meet up with Black Moon Lilith and Eris on the 17th that brings a bit of curveball action into the mix. And we got a Sagittarius Stellium new moon coming up on the 23rd that's going to act like a spotlight, lighting everything up that we haven't been able to see before, bringing some revelations, in some cases some towers, always a new direction to move forward with a new cast of characters. So there's a lot that's shifting. And then we tie it all up in a neat little bow with one more great black conjunction on November 30th. And it's rare to have a great black conjunction as it is. Uh, prior to this cycle we're moving through right now, it was back in 2013 that we had our last one. And before that, 2004. Normally they only occur every seven to nine years. But in 2022, we've had three of them and two of them are occurring in this two week period that we're moving through. So everything is coming to a dramatic conclusion. And one thing we know is that where we've been is not where we're heading as we get ready to move into 2023. We're gonna start to see a lot of expansion coming in, a lot of new people, new opportunities, new directions to explore, as well as things that need to be left behind as we move through the remainder of this year. So the holiday season is going to be a very interesting time of directional reroutes. And I feel like you're ready for it, Pisces. I feel like you've really began to step into your element. Um, I think you're in a period of discovering hidden talents. These hidden talents of yours are coming to the fore, maybe in surprising ways, maybe in areas where you didn't necessarily think you had any natural talent and you're sort of um, discovering that you have your own unique, creative, innovative approach to something um, and you're you're starting to gain more confidence in it, actually. You want to bring it forward. You want to share it. You want to share your voice in a new way. For some of you, this involves exploring singing. Um, and for others of you, it involves um, doing things like some spoken word or maybe going to some slam poetry meetups, you know, and actually using your voice to get a message out there. It's... Um, very interesting piece coming in, but I did really get this uh, strong hit about music. And I think you're also in a place where you're processing a lot of what you're letting go of, what you've had to let go of over this past year through creativity, through using your creative voice or using creativity as a medium, almost some kind of like art therapy. Some of you may even be interested in that, like getting into art therapy or uh, creating some kind of workshops, you know, where people can drop in and they can experience emotional release through their creative craft. You know, there's a lot of interesting things coming forward for you, but I feel like you are carving your own way. Those of you who have been working for somebody else, I think you're starting to think of more striking out on your own and creating your own career path, something that uh, feels more fulfilling to you. And it's interesting because as you start to trust this and you start to move outside of the box and you start to do your own thing and just really honor your, your hidden talents that are being revealed to you, I feel like that's one of the things that's going to be revealed to you during this uh, great black conjunction cycle. You're going to discover a hidden talent. It's something that you never knew that you really had the gift of, and yet it's going to be highlighted in some way. I feel like it comes through an unusual experience, like something where you have to innovate. Um, you have to innovate a way through because you kind of get thrown a little bit of that curveball action. You know, something unexpected happens. It makes what you were originally doing 
kind of obsolete. And so you have to figure out a new way to get around this block. And it's through busting through the block that you discover a new creative gift. And it sort of sparks this new direction of exploration for you that I believe really ties into your abundance. I'm There's something that's very front and center about Pisces that is about tapping into your creativity is what actually brings that financial stability that you're looking for. And it has every bit um, to do with your inspired visions and kind of like trusting your gut and intuiting the way forward, intuiting the way to do something and totally like going against the grain, going against the books, you know, there, that's how your rebellion is coming about. It's like your art is your rebellion. You're not going to be uh, told how to move forward with any project that's close to your heart. You know, you're really allowing yourself to drop all the rules and just let it be this organic experience that's um, leading you into what will really be your new career path, okay? I feel like this is something that's opening up for you. And there's a lot of financial abundance coming in too. I see like this continued financial growth for you. I feel like you've already started to see this, but you haven't really recognized the full scope of it yet. That's something that's going to be building for you as you come into the awareness of this hidden talent that's going to come forward for you. So I felt like using uh, the Halloween Oracle to open up for you. We got a few cards here on the board. We have Ghost with Regret. Okay. We have Joy, Rejoicing in the Present. And we have Lady de los Muertos, acceptance and equality. You know, I really see this as you're in a space where you really honored the deaths in your life. You looked at the ways that you feel regret, not because of what has to have been let go, but more that you held on to it for so long because you realize how much it kept you stuck. I feel for you, this had a lot to do with feeling like you wanted to show up for people. You wanted to be there for people. Um, you wanted to help them through. And in doing this, it was like you may have been able to assist them momentarily but there was this recognition that all your help and all your assistance was actually keeping this person from doing what they really needed to do which was be accountable and step into their own empowerment and do their healing work you know sweep their side of the street I think you stopped feeling so responsible for everybody's well-being for everybody else's stability and you started looking at how you'd lost a lot of time to this you'd given away so much of your time and energy to this that it left you with the regret of not being able to use that energy to really invest in your calling what was calling you forward and i feel like you you came to a place of acceptance with this you know acceptance that certain connections had served their purpose, that there was no further growth in the situation, that it was time to kind of go your own ways and, and let them figure out their path for themselves, honor their path. In some ways, you relinquishing this control, this feeling of being responsible for others walking their path in the right way, you know, and maybe you were really at odds with people. They had a different idea of how they wanted to live their life. You weren't in agreement with it. You guys couldn't see eye to eye. And I think you began to realize that you got to leave each person to their path, even if it's not something that you think is the wisest choice for them to make or a direction you would head in if you were in their shoes. But that's kind of the point. It's like you're not in their shoes. You got your own life to live. And 
there was this recognition that like the more that I focused on kind of rescuing these other people or showing up for these other people or helping them find the way, the more I lost pieces of myself, the more I gave away my own time to invest in myself and my own soul's calling. I feel like you looked at a lot of this and you held space for it. I feel like you did a lot of release work. I feel there was a celebration in this. I don't feel like you felt uh, that regret in letting go. It was more like the regret came from not doing it sooner. And now you are more into this space where you're moving into rejoicing, you know? You're feeling the release, the release in that letting go from no longer dragging this stuff with you from the past or saying yes to things that were done more out of obligation. Instead, you're in this place of really experiencing the joy of just being able to be in your element in the present moment and to tune into what's feeling right for you, what feels good for you, and go with that. Like, you're not wanting to focus on the heaviness. You're really wanting this lightness of being. And it's sort of like, you know, when the tree lets go of its leaves in the fall, it looks like it's losing something that actually it gets a lot lighter, right? It doesn't, it, it just, it, it doesn't have to worry about anything except just the bare essentials. And I feel like you've kind of gotten back to the bare essentials. And when I say bare essentials, I mean, you just like, you've peeled away all the layers of shoulds and, um, what's right, what's wrong, what's good for this person, what's good for that person, how can I keep everybody happy? And, you know, got back to just the core truth of who you are and what fills your heart at the end of the day. You're recognizing that when you're in that place where you feel fulfilled within yourself, it actually allows you to show up uh, better, you know, for others in your life. And the connection can be more rewarding because you're both coming from a place of, you know, being, being fulfilled within yourselves. And those are the kinds of connections that you're really looking to foster. I feel like connecting with nature has been really valuable for you. I feel like you've been getting grounded a lot, spending a lot of time with trees, you know. You've been enjoying the fall season. You've been enjoying witnessing the way that nature lets go. And you've been really finding a certain kind of um, wisdom and reflection uh, that is helping you move through this process of shedding these skins with so much more grace through having that time in nature. And we got on the bottom of the deck here, black cat, fortune meets opportunity. So it's very interesting. Cause like I was saying, I feel there's all this, um, these hidden talents coming forward for you. And, you know, I see the black cat is something that sometimes can be viewed as bad luck, right? There's that superstition, around the black cat. And I feel like a lot of people may look at some of the things that you've gone through, like the ways that you've had to let certain friendships go, the ways that you've had to let go, even of certain desires of yours, you know, to accommodate the circumstances that you were navigating, you know. There's been times that you've had to compromise and maybe it was hard to let go of certain things. In some ways, an outsider may look at these things or maybe even at first glance, it may have felt like, oh, this is like, this is kind of like an experience I'd rather not have to deal with. You know, it may have looked like a bit of bad luck on the surface, but you're starting to see the way that it actually created a whole new opportunity for you. And I think that because you've made these choices and you're starting to tap into this energy that you know, maybe something that looks bad on the surface actually can end up being the best thing that ever happened to me. You're aligning with this certain um, fortunate turn of events. There's some kind of opportunity that's going to come through for you. And I feel like this is something that has really been earmarked by your ancestors, okay? And there's a bit of generational healing going on for you right now, too. I feel like you're in the process of breaking the mold, Pisces. Like you're going to be the first one in your family to achieve something. Achieve something that has never been achieved by anybody in your family before. And in doing this, it's like overcoming this 
this limitation that's almost been like a pox on your bloodlines, like consciousness through, through generation after generation after generation. And this extends so much healing that comes forward as a result of this. I think you've been really connecting more with your ancestral energy. I think you might be a little bit more interested in your genealogy. You might be doing a little bit of research into this. You might be learning more specifically about the spiritual practices of your ancestors. And as you've been connecting with this, it's waking something up in you. It's waking their stories up in you. Again, there's that piece of like your voice coming through or the medium that you story tell through and you bringing this forward that it it's something that has to do with your ancestral roots and you're going to find more of these downloads coming in, more of these stories wanting to come forward in you the more that you do connect with your ancestors this is the love and legacy of our dna okay i also feel like this is your particular like ancestral bloodlines magic is being uh, awakened in you and we really see this here we got a lot of ancestral peace coming through for you we have eternal love love is love is love and it transcends physical death, okay? So this is very much like some of you might even be noticing that you have a bit of mediumship opening up in you. You might be noticing that um, through this particular season, you know, the veil has felt quite thin. You've been getting more messages from loved ones who have passed on. You've been having messages come through from them in your dreams. There's been times that somebody in your environment has said like the exact phrase to you that, you know, um, your grandpa who passed on, you know, once spoke to you. There's all these like reminders around you. And we got with this invisibility, authenticity. So there's very much this piece about like your ancestors are front and center on your path right now and they're really guiding you through this next change because you're aligning to a whole new path um, and the path that you're going to be stepping onto actually is very much in alignment with your purpose and why you're here and why you're here uh, the work that you're supposed to be doing at this time as you move into this next chapter, when we begin that fool's journey, which is what we're doing collectively, we're stepping into a brand new cycle. You're here to bring something that's like the wisdom of your ancestors forward. And I believe it's something using your voice, like there's some kind of storytelling that comes through. And maybe there's something innovative about the way that this story comes through you. Maybe it's also about looking at communication on different levels, the different ways that communication comes through. And I just got um, Gabrielle Roth dancing the bones, okay? It's, it's, that, it's that energy, you know, where it's like there's a lot of different mediums that our ancestors used in the past for communication. They used to sit around the fire and connect with each other and they would tell stories to each other. They would also, uh, you know, create dances and, and sing songs and, and they would write fairy tales and all of these things were ways to pass down the, the wisdom, the lessons, the medicine of the bloodline through these oral traditions. So there's something here that's really coming forward for you. And I think you're going to have a lot coming through in your dreams and through connecting with your ancestors. You may even want to start creating an opportunity for your ancestors' guidance to come through. Like maybe even just doing something as simple as like sitting in the morning and having a cup of coffee with your ancestors and just kind of talking to them about where you're at in your life, what next steps you're considering and ask for their guidance to come through. Ask them to lead you, you know, to put breadcrumbs on your path to guide you in the way forward. You might be really surprised what comes through because you're definitely in this period of deep healing and creation with the cauldron here, right? You're going to get things stirring up in a really good way. I also think some of you have been more active in your kitchen, you know, 
you've been cooking your own food and you've been really enjoying eating more things like soups and stews and um, dolls and saucy casseroles and just, you know, those kind of more comforting foods. Um, but you've been making your food more with um, intention. There's been more mindfulness around what you're putting in your body. You're noticing that when you let like your nutrition slip a bit and you start turning to junk food a bit or um, things along these lines, you're noticing a direct correlation with how it's affecting your energy, but also how it's affecting your, your clarity. In particular, like your intuition, your psychic awareness, your ability to really download information so i think that you're getting to this place where you're really starting to view um your body is like the wand like your body is this instrument that channels and directs the energy that comes through and because of that you're being a lot more mindful about the way you're nourishing yourself you're also understanding like the correlation between the mental the physical uh the emotional and manifestation and how it's all interconnected and you've been aware of this but it's like taking it to a whole deeper level where it's starting to actually factor into the way you feed yourself um, and just the way you care for your physical body um, some of you have been really exploring herbal uh, medicine as well you've been considering starting some kind of like herbal garden maybe making your own decoctions making your own tinctures um, some of you are looking into soap making. This just came through, you know, you want to make some goat milk soap. You want to really um, get into crafting on a different level and you got all kinds of inspired ideas, but you got a, like a unique take on it. Like I'm almost getting like metaphysical soaps or metaphysical body care, like soaps that do spiritual cleansing, energetic cleansing, even as they cleanse the body. Things along this line, beauty bar rituals, you know, things like this. I see you kind of making some interesting herbal preparations. So you might be interested in even starting like a little cottage industry, like something on the side that you want to do for fun and enjoyment and something actually branches out forward from this. And maybe you find through your ancestry that there's this huge like um huge storehouse of information about uh herbalism you know you may find that you have this tradition i just got of midwives and and different kinds of uh healers you know within your bloodline and some of these gifts are starting to come forward for you through your inspirations do a cut of the deck energy here yeah, we got the spider, okay? So you're definitely in a place of creativity and weaving webs, you know? Um, and I think that first there was the dismantling of the webs that were constructed before, the cobwebs that needed to be cleared, you know, the things that had grown kind of stagnant in your life that were just taking up space. I feel like you've been clearing these things out. I feel like you've also been doing a house cleaning if you haven't been doing a house cleaning, I think you've been thinking about it. And I think a deep clean would actually be really supportive for the energy you're working with right now. Just clearing out all that old energy. Uh, but I also see you making like a lot of new contacts. You're starting to build community. And this is a, a new community that's coming in for you of creative types. Like these people are very innovative they're forward thinkers they have fresh ideas there's stimulating conversation there's exciting directions to explore and you're going to start making these uh threads of connection and this is going to expand your reach and it's also going to get you more out in the world interacting with people on a grander scale i do feel like a lot of you are getting into something around communication though with that web because when i think of web I think World Wide Web. I think of the connectivity of all things, bringing things together, you know? So I feel like this is done on a communal level, though. It's done on a broader scope. And I see you really, like, diving into this. So before we leave off, I just want to get some clarification on all of this. It's really beautiful what's coming through for you. You're definitely just really enjoying your own energy, investing in yourself, building for yourself, 
uh, meeting new people, making new contacts, exploring new opportunities, discovering hidden gifts, you know, it's opening up a lot in you. But I also feel like, um, I feel like there's this need to really get yourself grounded, you know, grounded and clear out all the old remnants of any, you know, energy that's hanging around to any last letting go. Because where you're heading in the future requires that you can just be wide open. There's something that's going to come to light for you during this cycle. So any further guidance for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, North Node, Mercury, Mars, or strong 12th house placements. Any other word for Pisces? Just to give them some further clues, some further guidance. Okay, we've got a couple cards here. Yeah, I think right now it's actually really healthy for you to just continue to protect your space, give yourself time to yourself. Let it be okay that, you know, you're feeling a little protective of your time, your energy. I feel like there's so much that's coming forward for you in this time that you're allowing yourself to just be in a self-respect reflective space and focus on what's really kind of pulling you at a soul level. I think you're in like this final stage of integration and you're looking at the challenges that you've been through and you're also really recognizing the light that's coming through as a result of these more difficult experiences you had to push through. And that light that's coming forward is actually starting to light up, you know, your path ahead. You're starting to see things differently. And we do see that there's cooperation here with the three of pentacles, you know. A lot of this has to do with your work. A lot of it has to do with your work. This is a very work-centered reading. And it's not just about work as far as the, you know, physical, tangible, day-to-day, -day, put money in the bank account kind of work. It's also like doing the work like you've really been focused on your inner work and you've been focused on what energies can you bring together because there's a harmony in the way they work together there's a certain synergy and where just does it not work and you're not investing energy in what doesn't work anymore you're taking this opportunity to really like move forward in a new and empowering way so let's do a cut of the deck energy here on the tarot Again, you know, there, <laughs> yeah, there really is this piece. Look at this. There really is this piece about you, you know, holding other people at bay. I think that you might have a lot of people coming at you during this time. They want your time. They want your energy. Maybe they all want something from you. And I feel like you really need to hold your ground and protect your space because, you know, I, I almost feel like I don't want to say that it's purposeful, I think sometimes it's a subconscious thing, but I think that certain people around you can feel that you, you're kind of leveling up, like you're kind of investing your energy in yourself now, you're getting some traction, you're getting somewhere, and sometimes when people see that, they get this subconscious fear activated that they're going to be left behind, and so they can start to create distractions to draw your attention away from what you're focusing on. I think this message is coming through really clear and very strong that at the end of the day, you know what's important to you now, and you need to make sure you preserve that. You need to make sure that, you know, even as you do gain more traction and more people find out about what you have to offer, and even as you do start to take some of these opportunities that come your way, be mindful of like not overextending yourself. Make sure that you keep it in a place where it's really joyful and that you have that opportunity to block out your schedule. So you can focus on, you know, really nourishing yourself and filling your cup. I, I think that you might be surprised how busy you get and the opportunities that come in as things continue to roll out here. But look at this. We got six of wands. It's leading you to a great moment of success, okay? You're definitely overcoming the challenges of the past. This is like your time to shine. It's about you really stepping forward in your life in an empowering way. And, you know, your finances are going to be good. And I also think that there's going to be a real uh, public recognition. It was 29.29 on the clock when I said that. 
Mm, 11, 11, total alignment, 22, power number, okay? You are really manifesting something special here. And you're going to have your time to shine, man. You're in glow up phase. This is a really good message to come through. Lots of success. Lots of success, okay? So preserve your time. Preserve what's important for you because you're just getting ready to do that victory lap. 